SOCAP started because there were too many conferences that only wanted the right people in the room. And we think markets are made by finding valuable strangers and having them run into each other at new intersections that we create. We started our conference back in 2008 and we were hoping for 200 people and we suddenly got 600 people. It was about four weeks after Lehman Brothers went under, the crisis of 2008. And people seemed to come to us as kind of a, a flight to hope. And in 2009, we had 1,000 people from 34 countries. And that was encouraging. And then last year, we had uh, 1,500 people from 40 countries. And then we went to Amsterdam earlier this year and had people from 50 countries. And now back here in San Francisco in 2011, we have 1,600 people from 55 countries. SOCAP has a model, and we're trying to partner to take this model so people can have kind of SOCAP in their own places. We're part of a global network of change called The Hub. We have one in San Francisco that has 800 members and 19,000 square feet. We have one in Berkeley. But they're in Dubai, they're in Madrid, they're in uh, London, they're in Amsterdam, they're in Sao Paulo, and they're growing in lots of other places. And so we're working to co-invest with people creating hubs in Los Angeles and in New York and in DC and uh, possibly in Boulder and even Asheville, North Carolina. And it's a, just a place where change makers go and it's where change goes to work. And change is easier for the change makers inside because they don't have to explain the mad endeavor they're engaged in. They can work with each other and they can cooperate and things get done quicker and faster and better inside a hub. About 20 years ago, I started the organization, Ecologic Development Fund, the nonprofit organization with the belief and premise that we're losing our natural habitats of the world, the unique species, especially in the tropics, and the challenge and opportunity for these places are, is the poverty of the people that live there. And Ecologic has, for these past 20 years, found innovative and effective ways to work with the rural poor to be effective stewards of their land and resources while building livelihood alternatives. Uh, basically what we do is we, we bring a different uh, economic dynamic to uh, the poorest areas of, uh, of the city in order to change the economic dynamic of that area. I connect people together. Um, I'm a network weaver. I'm very good at meeting people and then introducing them to other people for whom it would be uh, valuable for a connection to be made between them. Being the exact opposite of what I used to be, which is a computer programmer who uh, rarely talked to other human beings. <laughs> Um, basically what my team and I are doing is trying to democratize startups. And what we're trying to do is help folks aggregate and navigate all the resources that are available to entrepreneurs for Silicon Valley in San Francisco. To be in a holistic view of taking care of entrepreneurs and being able to scale their businesses. Uh, I'm a designer, web designer, graphic designer, uh, social entrepreneur, and big ideas person one of the co-founders of Hub Seattle and starting an MBA in Sustainable Systems at Bainbridge Graduate Institute, which I'm really excited about. I work as a partner at a firm in Amsterdam called Pinwimic, Put Your Money Where Your Mouth Is Community, and we uh, matchmake between what we call conscious capital and social entrepreneurs who uh, are beginning businesses. We coach the entrepreneurs, we help them get ready for funding, and we find them funding. I started um to be in this field of social and impact investing about 17 years ago. And I did that because I came across the idea that through business, do good is a new thing. Um, usually people give money away, but if you do it through business, then you can get it back and do it again, and again, and again. I started something called the Relationship Economy Expedition. And this is a guided journey into a vision of the future. I believe we're entering a relationship economy where who you trust 
and who trusts you are more important than how many songs you have in the digital archive or how many shelves you own at the local store. That if you had two suppliers where everything else was equal, you would buy from the one that you trusted more. And the path to trust is through things like vulnerability and um, authenticity and other things that they don't teach you in business school. What I'm doing is advising investors and enterprises that are in the housing and urban regeneration space, um, essentially trying to drive their business models more towards socially and environmentally uh, responsible and responsive approaches. Our technology company is called .sub, D-O-T-S-U-B.com, and uh, it's a platform, a technology platform that allows people to add in captions and translated subtitles into video. And uh, we know that better communication between human beings um, uh, leads to warmer uh, relations. Uh, your business goes better, your relationships go better. It, it's just. Uh, it's part of doing global business in a way that speaks to other people's needs. Together with uh, the National Center for Social Economy in Denmark and a private enterprise called uh, Kuben Management, uh, in a partnership we have um, developed a support structure for social entrepreneurs in the area uh, as we think that by combining social entrepreneurship by coordinating some of the activities that the social act entrepreneurs do, we can do a better job in that area uh, uh, to tackle some of the social challenges that we, that we face. I mean, tangibly, what the Unreasonable Institute is, is trying to do is to help early stage entrepreneurs uh, more or less uh, uh, work with all the resources and attract all the resources that they may need to overcome hurdles that they face both now and into the future uh, with the goal of them building companies that will be financially self-sustainable and globally scalable. And the way we achieve that is by physically bringing together 25 entrepreneurs to live together in one house for six weeks um, in Boulder, Colorado. The goal of having them um, build relationships with all these different uh, mentors, consulting organizations, capital sources. When they do need their help or their advice or potentially their capital, they can just call on those people. The thing that brings happiness to my heart is seeing that uh, much of the social change and impact starts uh, and really gets accelerated with the personal impact, personal stories, personal observations, and the relationships with people who we are obviously serving at the end of the day. So I'm the founder of a company called uh, Biosense Technologies, based in Mumbai. Uh, we are trying to solve the problem of uh, people dying of anemia. Uh, so about one million women and children uh, die of undiagnosed anemia in uh, uh, most parts of the developing world. Uh, this is a problem which is uh, solvable, it's completely preventable, and we are trying to uh, uh, basically address it at the very roots. Uh, we have developed a diagnostic tool uh, which can be taken into the field and uh, the village health worker can uh, perform a diagnostic of anemia for about 20 cents per test, uh, which is going to, I think, to a large, to a large extent, improve health outcomes uh, and really bring that one million deaths down.